Hi guys. To some extent, when we look good, we feel good. We radiate confidence and attractiveness. Think of when you're wearing a piece of clothing that makes you feel great, or when you're having a great hair day, or when your skin looks radiant and clear. My friend Amélie, who's native to Paris, refers to this as je ne sais quoi, and the direct translation is I don't know what, but it means something that you can't quite put your finger on. So a woman or a man could walk by with radiating confidence and there's just something about them that's attractive and you can't put your finger on it. They just have something unique. That is when she would call it je ne sais quoi. She would say he has this je ne sais quoi. So personal toiletry items and makeup and skincare can make us feel that way. They're not only fun, but they also have the potential to make you feel more attractive. It's important to take care of your collection, and part of the process includes using them up before bacteria sets in, and decluttering the expired items and the things that you don't use from time to time. Hi, my name is Mika, and I own a professional organizing business. I'm also an avid writer, and I'm coming out with a book on decluttering later this year as part of a book series on how to have good vibes in your home. In this video, I'm going to give you five reasons to sort through your personal toiletries and declutter and organize your collection so that it's manageable and serves you well. This way you can look good and feel good without being weighed down by things that you don't need. And I also happen to think that the bathroom is an incredibly important room in the home because it's where we start our days and end our days. And it's often an overlooked room, which we'll get to later. Something else that I think that will benefit you in this video is I'll also put up a slide that you can snapshot about the expiration date of certain products. So reason number one, with older expired products, there are potential health risks and you can also damage your skin and your hair. So I've decluttered many of bathrooms, but I'd like to start off this section by telling you a quick story about a particular client who is a great example of what could happen if you use expired beauty products and skincare items. So there was a client and she lived in a house in Beverly Hills. She was very wealthy, big, beautiful house. And then she had a big, beautiful bathroom filled with all kinds of great skincare products, all kinds of brand names. And she just had a lot. So when she opened the door, really nice woman, beautiful, like her hair. And then she was fit and she's wearing this great clothing. And then we go up to her bathroom and we're decluttering it. And I noticed she had like a eczema or some kind of rash on her face. And so over the course of hours, we got to know each other pretty well, working alongside each other and kind of going through all her items. And I asked her and I said, do you have eczema? Because I've, I've had eczema before. And is that what it is? And she says, yeah, it's pretty recent. And it turns out she had a lot of expired personal care products in her bathroom because she had so much that she was using up older things and then she would buy new things and bring them in but the old things still had to get used so she was probably using expired items and by the time that she got to the other items that were newer those would be well on their way to expired so that's what we figured out there's a great website called checkcosmetic.net and it doesn't have all the brands on there, but it has a lot of brands where you can find the batch number on something and then you could enter it in and then it will tell you the shelf life of that product. The batch number has information on when the item was made or created. So there's an unopened shelf life and an open shelf life. So that's a great resource and I'll link it in the description below. So in any case, we cleared out her bathroom. It was really painful because there was so like nice products, but we threw out so much product that day. It was really unfortunate, but so much of it was expired. I would say a good 70% was expired. And though it pains me to say, I think we threw out like thousands of dollars worth of product because it was like Dior and La Mer and all these great brand names, but they were old and what happens when the products expire? They get bacteria and you can get skin infections, you can get rashes. So anyways, we threw those away. Uh, well, actually what we did was to recycle the containers, which you can take them to places like Origins and then they have drop-offs where you can recycle the containers. Mac also has a great recycling program where if you bring in, I think it's five items, you get one free lipstick, which Nope, I'm sorry, I stand corrected. 
It's if you bring in six makeup containers that you get a free lipstick. And if you are a loyalist, you can choose a lipstick, lip gloss, or small eyeshadow. So now let's fast forward to about six months later. I came back to help her with her kitchen. And her face was completely clear and radiant. And I said, oh, the, the, the eczema is gone. And she said, yeah, it disappeared a couple months after we decluttered her bathroom. So we came to the conclusion that she was using so many expired products on her face that it was giving her a rash. So there was bacteria in something that she was using or multiple things. So makeup and skincare and shampoos, conditioners all have a shelf life. So here's a slide with recommended expiration dates for various products, which you can snapshot or write down if you are interested for reference. These are recommended expiration dates, so you could use your own judgment and just use this as a guideline. There is an opened and unopened shelf life. So at the bottom in parentheses, I put that preservatives generally break down after about three years, but it depends on what preservatives. And so definitely pay attention to the change in color, texture, or smell. And there's also something called a period after opening. So on some products, it'll say 12M, which means 12 months, or 24M, meaning 24 months. And that's after you open it, it's good for that many months that's indicated. So going through the products on this list, there's shampoo and conditioner, which are good for about two years after opening. Moisturizers and creams are good for about one year after they've been opened. Nail polish, about two years. Foundation, 1.5 years. Mascara, three months. Although I think that's pretty low and I use mine for about six months, but three months is the recommended. Eyeshadow is good for about one to two years. Eyeliner, if it's pencil, two years. Liquid, it's suggested to be three months. Powder blush is good for two years. Cream blush is good for 1.5 years. And then lipstick is good for two years. Lip gloss is good for 1.5 years. Lip balm, one to three years. And lip pencils are good for 1.5 years. So again, use your own judgment. But if you're using these items past their expiration date, you could be putting yourself at a minor health risk for infections or rashes or putting bacteria on your skin it could even lead to some minor hair loss. So you want to be mindful that when you have products that you use them up and also don't buy so many that it's unmanageable unless it's like your job or something that it's a real true hobby for you. But otherwise, try to keep it a manageable amount because there's a really great quote by Paul Arden and he says, the problem with hoarding is that you end up living off of your reserves. Eventually, you will become stale. If you give away everything you have, you are left with nothing. This forces you to look, to be aware, to replenish. Somehow, the more you give away, the more it comes back to you. The key area to pay attention to here in terms of toiletries is, the problem with hoarding is that you end up living off of your reserves. So that truly does apply to personal toiletry products because there's a timeline on them. So say if I've had this happen, mm, my most recent client where we were doing toiletries, she had about eight shampoos and conditioners and she had just bought another set of shampoos and conditioners. So I asked her, which one are you using recently? Like, do you alternate? How does it work? And she said, no, I'm using the oldest ones first. So imagine all these bottles. She's using the oldest ones first because she knows that they'll expire. So she wants to use them up before she goes on to the other ones. However, I asked her, and this is common, but I said, how old is the one that you're using now? She's like, if I think about it, and she had to think about it, she said about four years old probably. A lot of time has passed. Well, that's too long for a shampoo and conditioner. So that means she's using older shampoo and conditioner. So she wanted to use that up and then use the next, use the next before she gets to the one that she recently bought, which by then, by the time she gets to it, chance that there's a chance that it'll be expired. So she was also having a slight issue with hair loss. So in fact, in Ode to Her, it actually got me curious about uh, what foods to eat to grow long, healthy hair and avoid hair loss. And so eventually I'll do a video on that. But anyways, you end up living off of your reserves if you have too much oftentimes. So it becomes like 
a waste of money and then also a waste of space and then also the products that you have don't seem so luxurious I guess like if she only had this brand new shampoo and conditioner which I think she paid quite a bit for at Ulta and they were really good brand names I think it was uh, Joico and Biolage so good brand names but if she just had the if she only had two shampoos and two conditioners for instance in her shower wouldn't that feel very luxurious as opposed to having eight and then feeling this race against time to have to use them up? I mean, that doesn't apply to any everybody, but I've been in so many houses where there are a lot of shampoos and conditioners, so it's just something to think about, a story that might apply to several people. So at one point, I was a little bit of a skeptic, and I was thinking, these expiration dates, like mascara being three months, for example, that's really short, and it, sometimes I still think that but I don't go too far outside of those guidelines. Um, I've had other examples of clients, like one client, she had a drawer full of mascaras and she was using old mascaras and then she got an eye infection, which is why she ended up calling me because she said, I need to do something about all my beauty products here. She says she just has a lot and it, it, beauty products are expensive, personal care items add up. Even if you buy more cost-effective ones, it does add up over time. So she wanted my help in organizing her bathroom because it was full of toiletries and makeup and personal care items and it was just overwhelming. But the eye infection really did it and uh, as soon as we opened her drawer, we got to check each batch number on checkcosmetics.net, which is such, such a great resource. And then almost all of them were three, four, five years old. And those were mixed in with like newer purchases as well. But when you have so many, it is kind of hard to keep on top of what's expired and what's not. Another client had angular chelitis, which is like a bacterial infection in the corners of your mouth. And then your mouth gets chapped just here. And apparently it's painful. It can get kind of like a bloody and it's just really uncomfortable for instance in the middle of the night but that was from using expired lip gloss or lipstick or chapstick so with shampoos and conditioners if something smells off or feels off or doesn't lather as well then there are chemicals in there usually so when they get old and they degrade and then they go off they could cause slight hair loss like patchiness or just dry hair or frizzy hair so it's best to try to use up your shampoos and conditioners within the allotted amount of time. So we all have skincare routines, whether they're very basic or extravagant, and we wash our faces and take the time and energy to put on serums and moisturizers to make our skin better for the future. But how ironic would that be if we were spending our time and our energy to actually damage our skin because we're using expired products? So anyways, it's very good to be aware of your products and then use them up before their expiration date. And also don't buy so many that it's not that manageable. Your home and the feeling in your bathroom will thank you, your wallet will thank you, and your skin will thank you. And reason number two is the emotional toll of clutter. So having clutter around makes the space feel less luxurious. And also there is an emotional toll. There's guilt every time that we look at something that we're not using. So if something's not suited to you or you've bought it and you decide it doesn't work for you, then it's probably time to let it go because they don't add to the pleasantness of your daily routine. They also cause overcrowding, take up precious storage space. They also get in the way. They can cause confusion when you're reaching for something that you're actually going to use, but then something that you're not gonna use is in the way or you might have to sift through those items to get to the items that you do love. So editing and getting rid of anything that isn't suiting you or that you don't use or that doesn't make you feel great will help with the emotional toll of clutter in your bathroom. Reason number three is that it could end up costing you more. So if you haven't decluttered your toiletries in a while and you have a lot of items, you might not be able to find what you're looking for, which leads to frustration until you eventually find it. Or if you can't find it, you end up going to buy a replacement. This happens more often than you would think, and you end up spending more money on a duplicate item that you didn't even need to buy. And worst case scenario is by the time that you find the item that you were initially looking for, it's expired. And another reason that could lead to buying duplicates is when you have too many items, it's hard to remember what you have. 
So say you're shopping and you can't remember if you own a green eyeshadow. So you buy one only to come home and find, oh, I had one in my drawer. So if you declutter your excess items, it's easier to find and remember what you have. This in turn reduces the chance of you buying duplicate items or having current items expire. Reason number four, you owe it to yourself to get ready in a beautiful space. A beautiful space doesn't have to be luxurious or fancy. It just has to be clean and uncluttered. It just feels so good to get ready in a clean and decluttered bathroom other than your bedroom. The bathroom is a place that you go in the mornings to when you start your day to start getting ready. And then it's also a place that you go in the night to end the night and finish off your day. I think your environment is very important and it impacts how you feel. So in the morning, if you are able to get ready in a clean and uncluttered bathroom with all the products that you love, without expired items, just things that you know that will suit you and make you feel your very best, then it's such a pleasure to spend the morning there and get ready, which can impact your mood for the rest of the day. There was a client that I helped and we spent an entire day, it was a 12 hour day on her bathroom and she owned a town home and I didn't get much of a tour of her home. We went straight up to her bedroom and it was the master bathroom that she wanted to clear out. And there was so much stuff you can barely walk around. So she was really great. I, she didn't even need me, I feel like, because she was just throwing away stuff. She's like, that I don't want, that I don't use, that I don't want. She just, she wanted to get rid of everything. And then I, we, we did keep a good amount, but we got rid of about 90% of her items. And before, when I first walked in, you couldn't even tell. There was this like really beautiful, luxurious bath, like a jacuzzi tub off to the side. And it was unearthed when we got rid of all the excess toiletries that were probably mostly expired. Some were moldy. It was all stuff that we should throw away at this point. And we unearthed this beautiful bathtub with jets. And so I stayed, it was really late and I stayed and we just cleaned. We cleaned the whole bathroom together and it was such a beautiful bathroom uh, when we finished. It was incredible. It went from like kind of almost a hoarding mentality of a bathroom it seemed like. It was really difficult to walk, there was no way to shut the door, there wasn't barely a pathway to the toilet. And then by the end of 12 hours, it was incredible. It felt like this luxury bathroom because it was clean, uncluttered, and it happened to actually be a really nice bathroom that we unearthed. So imagine for a moment getting ready in like a five-star hotel bathroom. Clean, large countertops with lots of space, large vanity, no clutter. It just feels so good, doesn't it, to start the day. It feels like fresh and optimistic. And that in itself kind of makes you just feel attractive and it can actually set the tone for the rest of the day. And also it could set the tone for going to sleep at night. Now imagine getting ready in a dirty, grimy, cluttered bathroom. It subtly impacts your day, but not just that, it also impacts how you feel about yourself. So we don't even need this fancy five-star hotel bare bones of a bathroom, but how different we feel when we get ready somewhere nice and clean and decluttered. The other thing too is you can have great expensive products, but if you have a lot of them, they cluster together and kind of lose their luster. But on the other hand, if you have just a select amount of those products, a manageable amount that you could use, it feels so good and so luxurious. And not having too many products makes your space feel beautiful because there's less visual clutter and you can better appreciate the items that you have. Reason number five, taking feng shui into account. So according to feng shui principles, everything exudes energy. Items that you love or use regularly have positive energy. Items that are left used or unwanted or unloved have a murky energy. And having that murky energy around you weighs you down. So in a nutshell, getting rid of excess items that are just cluttering up your space basically takes a weight off of you. It's the little things that can add up and make a big difference. Decluttering your personal toiletries and makeup and skincare and hair care might not seem like much, but you might end up shedding a bag of items and clearing out some stuck energy in the process, which can also directly impact other areas of your life. So I hope that this video motivates you to take a look at decluttering your personal toiletries if it's needed. 
Remember to follow the rule of thumb to only keep what you use, need, and love. Please hit the like button if you found this video fun, informative, or helpful. It helps other people find my channel and I'd really appreciate it. If there are any other areas of decluttering or organizing that you want a video on, please let me know in the comments below. And please subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. Thank you so much for watching and see you next week.